Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight Podcast. We are coming to you from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. My name is Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. And my name is Thomas Kislet with the Rome Floyd Chamber. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Good. How are you, Roger? Very good. Uh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, we've got a good group of guests today. It's, we always kind of have an eclectic mix. I call it a cocktail party. Uh, we, as, we, as we gather to discuss business, let people share their stories, try to create connections, and celebrate what the Chamber does in our community uh, with, with the development and growth of small businesses and participation in the Chamber. Uh, Thomas, would you mind introducing our guests, please? Yes, uh, we have uh, Stuart Honsky uh, here from uh, Tweet Frog, uh, Frozen Yogurts in Rome. And then we have uh, Treva Hoover uh, from Reinhardt University. And then uh, we also have on the invite list Susan McDaniels uh, from Max Air Mechanic. Uh, she still has some uh, technical difficulties, so we, we hope she, she's joining in here at the later moment. Um, what's unique about uh, today's guests is um, everybody, everyone had plans to attend actually a business expo back in fall. And, you know, it was a crazy year. It's still crazy times. But, you know, it's just nice to finally see a face. And um, I never met uh, Tre- Trevor, uh, Trevor in person or, or Stuart. Uh, we were on the phone and via email. And it's just a nice way to just chat and get to know each other a little bit. Hi, Stuart. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. And Treva, hi there. How are you? Hey, good morning. Uh, and as Thomas mentioned, we are we're in a Zoom room, and we're hoping Susan McDaniel can join us uh, from from Max Air. Um, she seems to be having some uh, some issues, um, and if she jumps in here, great. If not, uh, we'll just keep going. So um, let's. I guess let's start with you, Treva. You uh, work for Reinhardt University. Can you tell us what it is that you do at Reinhardt? Absolutely. I, I work in the professional studies and graduate admissions department, and that uh, particular department caters to the online programs that speak to um, healthcare, business. Uh, we also have graduate level programs that speak to education, uh, fine arts and writing. And um, primarily what I do prior to COVID, I was out in the field a lot attending chamber meetings, expos, um, just anything that we can do to make to bring awareness to the online and adult level programs um, for Reinhardt University. And now that that has um, has taken hold and t- until we you know kind of have a little more leeway out of the community, I'm doing a lot of things virtually for the university. And that would be uh, webinars, um, just virtual open houses, information sessions, and, and most recently some some film sessions with the deans and program coordinators to to post on social media. Yeah, I think we've all kind of gotten used to uh, doing things virtually. Um, mm-hmm. Well, maybe not used to it. We're begrudgingly accepting of it because of the pandemic. Yeah. Pretty uh, used to it now, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. But Stuart, you're in a world where um, you know uh, virtual doesn't get it done. You you need to, you need to get premium frozen yogurt in people's in people's bellies. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, right. Virtual virtual is a little difficult. So uh, t- tell us a little bit about uh, Sweet Frog premium frozen yogurt. Okay. Um, we opened the business in November of 2013, and um, we're next to in the public sh- uh, shopping center across from uh, Floyd Medical. And uh, I've been the owner since we opened in 13, and um, we we love serving the community. We have a real a fairly small store, but uh, seats 35 plus people in the store. Uh, but we also do a whole lot of uh, catered events in the community, and um, our probably our our high water mark was maybe right at 200 events in one year wow. back in 2017. And so even even with the COVID last year, we did uh, more than 100 events. An event could be you know 30 servings to an office, or it could be 600 servings to a to a school. So uh, we love to get out in the community and and um, you know, take, take what we have to where people are. So what kind of adjustment have you had to make during the pandemic when, when eating out and, and dessert places like just kind of got hit hard? Um, of course, initially it was, it was very tough for, for everyone. We, um, we never actually closed. We went to a, I think it was 
maybe one o'clock to seven o'clock hours, something like that. So it really pared down uh, the hours. Uh, we didn't have any in-store uh, dining at all. Uh, but currently we're uh, we're at 50 percent capacity inside. Uh, so we do have some people that come in. We we have curbside pickup. We, of course, are doing DoorDash and dinner delivered using those services to, to get it to people. But, um, you know, it's 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 going OK. Um, and we're thankful for the business we do have. So we really just, you know, if people are comfortable coming in, we let them come in. We do have, uh, you know, we have a self-serve model where people come, they get their cup, they get their yogurt, they get their toppings. And um, we've added gloves uh, for the customers to use. Uh, our staff, of course, are masked up and, and all that and, and using gloves as well. And so we can, we can serve them uh, if the customer desires or we can let them continue to self-serve, but with, of course, the gloves. Um, so that's what we're doing inside. Well, it's interesting of our, our guests that are here. You're kind of you're selling two different types of products. Uh, so, Treva, when you're trying to sell Reinhardt University, what's your sales pitch? What do you tell people about it? Hmm. I mean, you know, really, I just give a little insight into the school, um, you know, and and I will, and I am, um, I do speak to the traditional side of things as well, you know, just to let the community, because we, we have many traditional programs, traditional in the sense that they are on ground. Um, now I'm, I personally think that traditional more these days is really online, but, um, just to let them know that we are a, um, a nonprofit, private, faith-based, uh, university that resides in Waleska, Georgia since 1883, uh, small student population, little over 1,700. So you get a lot of a lot of attention going through your classes there, um, even in the online aspect, and still have an opportunity to uh, to connect, you know, with the faculty and with the school itself. Um, the since we are with the online programs, you can complete them a little sooner than you can with schools that are on the semester system because those classes meet year round. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, something that typically would take two years, you could feasibly finish in a year and a half. Um, gotcha. And and you're primarily affiliated with the Methodist Church, correct? That's right. That's right. But yet you're... And we do offer partnerships. Um, that's one of the things I speak to quite a bit is that any, uh, for instance, we have got um, partnership in place with three of the Chick-fil-A franchises uh, that are located over in that Canton area and coming. And as the... Um, employees that come through our MBA program and Chick-fil-A terms it as their leadership program, they receive a tuition discount. So we have several of those partnerships in place, whether it's for business or for healthcare. We have a partnership, for instance, with um, Cherokee County School District, uh, the sheriff's office, and, and the, the employees of these, of these entities are able to receive tuition discounts. And in turn, we go in and we, we speak to the programs for them and give them information. Well, and one of the things I wanted to touch on in case people may be listening to this from wherever, since we're a podcast, we're on the World Wide Web, as they say. Waleska, Georgia is kind of tucked in between, I guess, a triangle of Adairsville, Cartersville, and Canton. Is that, is that about right? You're kind of, you're, you're, in, right. you're in the split between where 75 and 575 split the, right. the interstates. You're up there in that, in that split area. Um, besides online, are there any remote learning campuses? We have one in Woodstock um, and we have a space in Cartersville. If yeah. we get enough people up and running for, for a cohort for say um, education or police Academy or things like that. So um, there's always opportunity, even in Rome, if there's if there's a company um, that would like to pursue a partnership with us and we have enough people to create a cohort and can find a space for that to happen, we're willing to work with that too. Yeah, so that's why not only, you know, even though your campus is in Waleska, um, your relationship with the chamber is important, correct, here in Rome, Floyd that's County? Right. Uh, that's wh- right. Okay, Stuart, what about your relationship with the chamber? How has that helped you? Um, well, again, we, we joined up before we even had a, a building uh, there over by Publix when Publix was being built. Um, it's just, it's just um, relationships and networking, um, partnerships. Again, we, 
you know, we want to do as much as we can to, to help drive traffic into the store through those kind of relationships, but also we want to uh, know what people are doing in town and um, with our catered events, uh, we, we want to know how we can help those other businesses, any business, but certainly businesses that are, that are connected with the chamber could be, um, you know, safety rewards for a manufacturing facility or, or safety incentives. If they reach, you know, X number of days without a, an accident, that kind of thing, it could be spring flings or family picnics in the fall with different companies. Um, it can, it can really be whatever it needs to be. We've got, uh, a great product, frozen yogurt. We've got some fun mascots that we can bring out if there's there's children involved. But we just really want to to be a resource for the, the community and um, connect however we can. Well, Thomas, you had mentioned the Business Expo, uh, which had to go virtual this year because of the pandemic, but it was still it was still very well received. Correct? Everybody liked it. Um, in fact, moving forward, you've touched on the fact there there we we probably now will always have an online uh, part of that, right? The way you execute it. Just, just an online component. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, uh, with, with, with uh, products like uh, frozen yogurt, that's, that's a uh, little tough to, uh, you know, to bring this across, but, you know, um, at least there are several other uh, ways where you can, you know, direct traffic into your store or even, you know, uh, even uh, spread the word uh, beyond the county or state lines. Um, you know, why not offering, and uh, Stuart did that, um, gift programs or gift c- certificates or uh, they, where your folks in California, you know, can treat your family um, at home in Rome. So um, it's just an extra component um, and uh, we are all connected in the world right now, but we all meet and eat at home. <laughs> so um, I think it's uh, it's great and we definitely going to move forward uh, with that pr- two pronged um, um, version of the expo. And uh, fingers crossed, uh, in fall, we, we thought we could uh, do it uh, late January, uh, February, but you know, then everybody sees the numbers are still way too high. But um, you know, with the vaccines coming out now, um, we're just hoping uh, everything's coming back to normal uh, late spring, summer, and then uh, we're moving forward uh, with, with our. In, in, in person event again in, in the fall. Sure. Um, well, Treva and, and Stuart, I guess this question is for both of you. We'll start with Treva. So have you participated in the expo in the past and how beneficial was that to you? I have participated in the expo in the past and, and I feel like it was super ben- beneficial for Reinhardt University um, simply because I found that there were not a lot of people who knew of Reinhardt. We had plenty of those that, who did but those who did not and just being there and, and being able to speak to them and, and have things for them, you know, giveaways and things like that, um, just to create a level of awareness of us, you know, and the fact that we do offer things online and in person. I think it was great, honestly. Well, and plus, before I get to Stuart on talking about the expo, um, when I was growing up, you guys were Reinhardt College, but uh, what, right. 10 or 12 years ago, you became Reinhardt University. So you offer multiple degree programs and it's four years and all that. That may be some of the misconception that over the past decade you've had to, you've had to help mm-hmm. sp- spread the word about, right? Right. Online is, is fairly new for sure. Yeah. And with the NC Sarah certification, actually anybody across the country can, can join in for those programs. But, but yes, getting the word out about the online programs is, is something completely new to, you know, for a lot of people to hear. Gotcha. Uh, Stuart, back to the expo we were discussing. How, how has that benefited you guys in the past? Uh, what, were you able to provide samples on site? Yes, absolutely. Um, Sweet. <laughs> for the past, I don't know, two or three, maybe three years or so, I can't recall, we've uh, been a quote-unquote food vendor for the chamber and uh, provided samples, good good samples for the both nights, uh, the, the kind of the business after hours portion, but also the the full day on Saturday. Um, so we have samples to give away, uh, usually run through several hundred of those. And, um, we do a raffle for, I think a free party for 10 or or so people, uh, that we, we have a raffle. We, we just love being involved. We love seeing all the other, um, chamber members. We, we love of course seeing the public. And at this point, after seven or so years, people know generally that where we are and, and who we are and what we're doing. But, um, 
we love just getting out and and uh, talking with people about again same 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 line from from me how we can be a resource for the community uh, businesses schools churches organizations whatever it might be uh, so this may be an odd question but I'm curious uh, in a non pandemic year you know just where, where everything is normal um, does your business increase in the summer and wane in the winter because it's a cool, refreshing treat. I eat it year round. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's uh, a, a normal question. It's uh, very seasonal. And, you know, one of the reasons why we started doing the events um, was to help uh, flatten out our, our uh, seasonality aspect of the business, because whether it's a school or a business, you know, if it could be January, February, December, whatever, and, and we're inside and serving and, and nobody knows the difference as far as the weather goes. But, um, you know, as far as your comment, my, my brother lived in Alaska for a while and he, before we started the business, he, uh, I recall him mentioning that per capita key, key phrase there per capita, I think the most, uh, ice cream consumed in the U S is in Alaska. So, um, you know, they, you know, you're, you're going to enjoy ice cream, frozen yogurt, um, wherever you are. So, yeah, uh, I get uh, speak, speaking in layman's terms. What's the difference? What makes, uh, well, yogurt, um, we occasionally will have an ice cream product in the store, uh, a soft serve ice cream. Uh, but, 90% of our product is frozen yogurt and it's just a, um, it's got the probiotics and it's, it's the more healthier, um, version of ice cream. Uh, many people cannot, I guess, you know, it, it's, 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 it's certainly different than the scooped ice cream you might get somewhere else, but, um, many, many people can't tell the difference as far as, uh, between soft serve yogurt and soft serve uh, ice cream. But, it's a healthier uh, option. Well, it may be a healthier option until you start adding the toppings. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> Such as M and M's, syrup. <laughs> what what else do you have? <laughs> we we've got uh, more than seventy different options you can uh, make your own creation with. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Thomas, how's your sweet tooth? Well, you know, you opened in 2013. That's when we moved to Rome. And our son back then was four years old. He's uh, 11 now. And, you know, Sweet Frogs is just a family staple. It's a, it's a landmark. And, um, yes, speaking of toppings, <laughs> that's that's where he comes in. You know, gummy bears, uh, you know, chocolate sauce, uh, you name it. But, you know, we, we love it. And we also love the fact, you know, how you are involved in the community, especially also with the schools. And, um, you know, it's, it's just this brand awareness. Um, concept uh that you that you, that you guys live there you know and uh you know we, we love the pictures and he sees the pictures of himself on on the on the video screen there and uh the mascot is all over, all over the place um and um great great work yeah Thank let's you. let's talk branding you thomas you were you were touching on that and and what Stuart has done like um treva how how do you brand um a university you know, just, is it, is it about name recognition? Is it about you getting out there and telling people, you know, we have online now, we're a four-year university over the past 10 years, things like that. What's, what's the branding like for you? Do you use social media? Do you advertise? We definitely use social media. Uh, we've LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and as far as reaching those um, that are on the more traditional side, I mean, that's how that's how these prospective students are, you know, that's how they communicate these days. So it's really more about that than anything else when it comes to that, that population. We are, um, as far as our, our branding with our marketing is concerned, uh, for a long time, our, our slogan has been, you will be. Um, we have now switched that up. And um, because he, I, I don't know if any of you know, but our mascot is, a, is the eagle. Yes. And, um, and so that we're working on a new, um, a new marketing campaign that will involve that Eagle. And is, and I can't remember exactly what the slogan is, but it's something about the, the Eagle soaring, you know, but, uh, but yeah, any, any um, social media outlet, we, we are constantly posting things just to keep people up to speed on things that we're doing in the community. Well, and does your, 
can you get, can you deep dive a little bit more for me about your your relationship with the the Methodist Church? It's not a Methodist. I mean, all all faiths are welcome. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's just it's absolutely. just a, it's just affiliated yeah. with the Methodist Church. We're, yes, yeah. and it's, like I said, we've been there since 1883. Right. Um, that chapel that is on the campus has been there that long, you know. So it's um, that it, now one of the classes that students take as they go through the programs is a religion class, and they can pick whichever, whether it's world, you know, wh- whatever that looks like for them. Um, but that's as far as any of the learning of the faith goes is that one religion class. But yes, we are affiliated with that chapel there on campus. Well, does does the the branding of the church help in any way spread? I mean, does the Methodist church get involved in marketing uh, Reinhardt or are you, it's a separate and distinct type thing where you guys are. It's it's pretty separate. Um, I will say that I've gone to a couple of different events, like at different Methodist churches when they do career fairs, because a lot of times they'll host career workshop, you know, do resume workshops or, um, you know, some interview scenarios, things like that. But, but um, no, it's not anything. We, we want people to know that we're affiliated with that, but but um, it's it is pretty separate. I mean, the people that attend that chapel on Sunday mornings are not necessarily our students or sure. faculty. Yeah, yeah. understood. <laughs> um, so it just so it just kind of tied back to the marketing and branding um, yeah, because that's a great relationship to have with the the big mm-hmm. reach of the Methodist Church. But but not every student is named John Wesley. I guess was my point. It's it's that's mul- right. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It's multiple faiths. Stuart, uh, Thomas touched on a little bit of your branding and marketing. What do you guys do? Do you do you have to advertise, or is the word of mouth now so good about your product? Social media, print, radio, things like that. What do you What do you do? Well, you have to advertise. Um, you know, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards, kind of thing. Um, I do have a degree. Uh, it's about a hundred years old now, but I do have a degree in advertising and marketing. So, um, from, you know, from, where? Love, from where, from uh, where, uh, Tennessee and Knoxville. I was going to say not, not Reinhardt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, you know, we, you have to, there's so much noise and so much competition, um, uh, whether it's, you know, we've obviously got some direct competitors, but we also, you know, there's just a lot of, um, distraction and, and, uh, we want to stay in people's minds as far as uh, coming out to have a, a nice, nice um, dessert with their family. So we uh, we've done a number of things. Um, we've done we we do advertise with schools. We do some uh, advertising with sign, signage and different things at schools. Uh, we've done some billboards in town. Um, we've been on you know whenever I can, I try to be connected with whether it's things like this or interviews and different things, um, newspaper articles, et cetera. Uh, we've done some newspaper uh, advertising occasionally. It's not very much, but we've done some of that. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely try to, to push things out. And, and social media, um, frankly, it's, it's become um, much more difficult, I think, for social media. We, we're not seeing near the number of um, the reach that we, we used to have 12 months ago. And I think it, whether it's algorithms or something else, but I've been trying to, uh, work on that recently to figure out what, you know, what's, what are some good channels for us in the social media realm since we've had some trouble there. Um, it's interesting. I, sometimes I wonder if there's too much social media <laughs> people, it's just coming at us right. from all, but, but certainly it's the, it's the wave of the last 10 years. What is you, you had mentioned you, you had advertising marketing background, uh, educationally. What was your background prior to sweet frog? Sweet frog is a franchise, correct? It is. Um, it started in Richmond back in Oh nine. Um, and, uh, to go on the, you're talking about Methodist, uh, sweet frog, the F R O G stands for fully rely on God. So the founder who started it in Richmond, you know, uh, 11 years ago, he kind of baked that into the brand. He wanted to, to be a, obviously a family friendly, uh, family values kind of place. And, uh, the founder kind of put that in there. So most people know that by now, but there's plenty of people who still uh, are learning that for the first time, but, and we're not, you know, um, we just want it to be a, a really warm, friendly, uh, positive place for families to come. And we work hard to, 
to make that a real consistent experience for them. But um, before, um, to answer your question, before we I started the business, um, I had some ministry um, missionary background, and I also also had some some marketing agency experience. And so with this business, I was able to to kind of capture both the business side of my 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 brain and the and the ministry side. Not that we're handing out Bibles at the door or anything like that, but um, you know, it's it's just a great combination for a brand that um, the brand fits me really well. Good. Um, I, I was aware of the acronym. Actually, it was on my list of questions here to ask you. I should have done it earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. Treva, what is what is your background? How did you get where you are? We we like asking this question. So, if any young person is listening to the podcast. Yeah, I, one of the one of the best advices, best pieces of advice I got many years ago. I'm digressing here. Was if you see somebody and you want to be this or that, see somebody who's in that position, and follow their path. They, you know, if you want to be, I, I use sports analogies because I'm a sports guy. But if you want to be a head football coach somewhere, you know, how do head football coaches become head football coaches? Or if you want to be a Vice president of marketing for Coca Cola. Well, the vice president of marketing for Coca Cola had a career path. Try, you know, follow the path. Then, of course, some people get into their life and they have five different careers. They try this, <laughs> they try that. You know, they're they're a real estate agent and they're a car salesman, and that's okay. Um, right. But but uh, so, Treva, what is your background? How did you how did you get involved there at, at Reinhardt? Well, I do have um, actually. At this point, more than a, more than ten years experience in, in higher education, but um, my passion is really, you know, working with the students and and uh, and also helping to coordinate events. Um, the role of recruitment allows me to get out into the field and just to speak with um, speak with different types of people all the time and be you know active in the community. And that's one of the things I, I really love about that. Um, but coming into Reinhardt, I'd had a, a, a experience at that point um, in sales, uh, in outside sales, but then also in higher education where I was heading up uh, different events and also uh, helping to um, counsel students to know what programs may work best for them, you know, to truly make it was a, make sure it was a good fit. And that's one of the things that I still enjoy doing now is having those conversations to, to see if that really is going to be a good fit for them, whether it's going into a nursing program or or entering into an MBA or something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in it for, for a while now and, and really enjoy it. So, and as far as Reinhardt itself is concerned, there, one of the things that drew me to it was really the, it's just a, a small community feel. The people, you could tell the first time that I met a lot of the people on campus um, that have been here there for so long, um, it really, this really is just like a family. You know, everybody's looking out for each other. And, and um, so it was a really attractive quality that for me to see, you know, an organization. So Great. Um, well, let's go around. Let's go around here and do some. Thomas, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of, of your campus, it's, it's really picturesque as well, you know. And even, you know, if, if you enrolled online, um, you know, there are probably times that you have to visit campus. But, you know. Even for folks listening, um, you know, just just take a day trip. It's it's beautiful. Just just walk around the campus, and I also know, and I've attended uh, arts programs there as well. You know, I, I know the Cherokee Chorale has performances there, and uh, you also have the athletic uh, program now there. And um, you know, it's it's just a nice uh, feel good atmosphere there. And the fact that you offer online. Um, you know, uh, classes now is, is just tremendous because, you know, of course, uh, we want to keep the talent locally. And mm. but, you know, we, we rely on your expertise to, um, you know, educate that talent and um, keep growing, uh, you know, mutually. So uh, beautiful. Yeah, it is really pretty. It's over 500 acres and athletics has really blown up. You're right, Thomas. We've got so we've got a football team, uh, soccer, baseball. I mean, it's it's crazy to me that this tiny little school in, in Waleska has got really some great athletic programs. Um, but one of the things that Reinhardt's really known for um, is their, is, is the arts. Um, we have a lot of people that are really interested in that music program and um, in the Fellaini center is all the time. Now we're doing them outdoors because of COVID, but there are events uh, that start up again, the end of February 
um, on Saturdays and Sundays, we're going to have outdoor concerts and then, and then hopefully by the fall, get them back in the Fellaini Performing Arts Center. So. I love hearing about sports excelling, being a sports guy. And, and, and I always point this out. Sports is, you know, arts are important to the, the vibrancy of a community. So is sports. Sports brings people together and, you know, to support, support your team. And it's just part of the fabric of community. Uh, let's kind of wrap up things here and go around quickly. I just want people to get contact information, wh- whatever you want to say, your social media, your website, your physical location, so we can sell some yogurt. Uh, but I also want to remind people, Stuart, that you, you had mentioned that you guys do catering. That's a great idea. You know, if you if you have an right. office here in Rome and you have employees, give them a summer treat. You know, uh, right. <laughs> have, have, or a winter treat, yeah, or a win, or a winter, yeah, or a February <laughs> treat, a March treat, an April treat. Um, but yeah, just some contact information. What you'd like to tell folks um, to reach Sweet Frog, you can. It's easy. It's sweetfrog dot rome at gmail dot com. Again, sweetfrog.rome at gmail.com is probably the best way to, to track us down, and we'd be happy to, to follow up any way we need to. Or go by your, we, go by your store. Do we do, go by the store. We also um, we have a corporate, because it is a franchise, there is a, a sweetfrog.com site. It's the, the corporate site, but um, we, we post a lot of local things on our Facebook page. Okay, so you are on Facebook, and of course you mentioned you're in the public shopping center uh, right. right there in the – the heart of town. Um, uh, Treva contact information for you, email or website. How can people get more information about some of your online offerings, things like that? So our website is Reinhardt and um, it's spelled a little different. It's R E R E I N H A R D T. It's Reinhardt.edu. Um, my contact information is Treva.hoover at Reinhardt.edu. So it's T R E V A dot Hoover. Um, we do have Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So you can reach us there as well. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you're everywhere. Um, Thomas, the gambit. <laughs> Thomas, final thoughts from you? Chamber contact information? Yes. Uh, call us, Rome 706-291-7663. Google us, Rome Floyd Chamber. Um, our website is uh, romega.com. As for Thomas, or as for our friendly staff, um, we are here to help you, to connect you, to find the answers for you. Um, if you're a business owner or, you know, if you're just curious about the community, call us. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. This was, this was fun. This was informative. Appreciate it. I'm Roger Manus. And for Thomas Kislad and Jeannie Krieger over at the Rome Floyd Chamber, thank you so much for listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. We broadcast from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thank you for listening.